Welcome back. In this lesson we are going to learn about the so-called delta tracking of neutrons in the space of the system. So we have learned in the previous lessons that uh, the traditional tracking of the neutrons in the space requires to calculate the distance to the closest interface between two cells. Now this has to be done because the different uh, regions before and behind the interface may have different total cross-sections. So uh, these two cross-sections cross may be different, therefore the distance between collisions is different. So we need to stop the neutron here in the interface and uh, recalculate the distance to the next collision according to the new total macroscopic cross-section. So this calculation of the distance to the closest interface is very expensive in terms of the computing cost. So a significant part of the computational time of the whole simulation is devoted for the calculation of the distance to the next uh, closest interface between uh, the cells. Now, what if the total macroscopic cross-section behind the interface was the same as the total macroscopic cross-section uh, in front of the interface? That doesn't necessarily mean that the materials would have to be the same, just the total macroscopic cross-section uh, would be the same. In that case, the distance between the collisions would be the same before and after the interface and we wouldn't really need to calculate the distance to the nearest interface at all. Uh, so that's interesting idea, isn't it? We actually have a way to manipulate with the total macroscopic cross-section in all the cells. We know that by introducing the virtual macroscopic collision cross-section in different materials, we can uh, change the total macroscopic cross-sections in those materials, but we will not affect the uh, results of the Monte Carlo simulation. So this is the simple idea of the delta tracking of neutrons in the system. This procedure makes sure that by introducing the virtual collisions in different cells, the total macroscopic cross-section is equal in all the cells in the whole system. So when that is assured, when all the cells in the system have the material with the same total macroscopic cross-section, then the distance between the collisions is sampled from the same distribution in the whole system, so no longer we need to calculate the distance to the interface. So let's take an example of a system that has three cells. So uh, we have three cells with uh, three different materials, so the different materials are uh, characterized by different uh, total macroscopic cross-sections. So let's say that we have uh, the first cell with a cross-section for the absorption and the scattering of uh, this size. So this is for the first material. Then the second cell will have a very large cross-section for absorption and scattering. And the last cell may have very small cross-section like this. Now, I'm going to introduce a virtual collision to the first cell. So I will associate the cell with a certain amount of virtual macroscopic uh, cross-section, sigma v the first cell in such a way that the final total 
microscopic cross-section that combines both the real cross-sections and the vector would uh, equal the uh, microscopic cross-section in the second uh, cell because the second cell contains a material which has the largest total microscopic cross-section right so the similar procedure I will then also do for the last third cell so I will introduce a large uh, virtual cross-section in the last uh, cell so at this point the total microscopic cross-sections for all cells are the same they are equal so the delta tracking procedure has to identify the cell with the largest total microscopic cross-section in the system and then it needs to introduce virtual cross-sections in uh, all the other cells in such a way that the total microscopic cross-section is equal in every single cell in the system. So once we have all these cross-sections prepared we can uh, start to simulate the neutron transport simulation in the whole system and we don't have to worry about crossing any boundaries between the cells. We will be using the same distribution to sample the distance between the collisions and in the in this case the uh, transport simulation in the first cell will include some virtual collisions in the second cell there, there will be no virtual collisions because there is no uh, virtual cross-section associated with this material in the second cell and there will be many virtual collisions in the third cell so you can imagine if you have a system which contains very strong absorbers uh, the total cross-section would be very large in uh, the absorber cell so in that case it would increase uh, the total cross-sections in the whole system so uh, a large uh, amount of these cells in the system would contain very large virtual cross-sections so then there would be many virtual collisions simulated in those cells which contain very large virtual cross-section and that could be a problem because every time you simulate the virtual collision you still need to check uh, in which cell the collision takes place because you need to know the uh, proportion between different uh, reactions between the virtual collision and the absorption collision and the scattering collision so uh, you need to figure out in which cell you are anyway so the only gain that you make is that uh, you don't have to calculate the distance to the boundaries otherwise uh, you still need to be checking the uh, in which cell you are currently so the delta tracking really can help you when uh, the system contains uh, cell with materials which have approximately the same uh, total microscopic cross-section so that uh, there would be very few cells in which the virtual cross-section would be very large so for instance this system would perhaps not be a good candidate for uh, the delta tracking because there are two cells which contain a very large virtual cross-section but in other cases when uh, the materials in the system have a very similar total microscopic cross-section the delta tracking can really help to improve the efficiency of the simulation a lot. So let me just summarize the advantages and disadvantages of the delta tracking. Perhaps the major advantage is the simplification of the Monte Carlo code. This is because the uh, finding of the distance to the closest boundary is quite a difficult task for uh, uh, complex shapes of these boundaries so uh, the delta tracking really can simplify the Monte Carlo code a lot and the other advantage of the delta tracking is the possibility to improve the figure of merit the efficiency of the calculation in case the system doesn't contain uh, very strong absorbers 
If the system does contain strong absorbers, then the figure of merit may be decreased uh, as compared to the traditional uh, tracking of neutrons. And then uh, Monte Carlo codes that uh, offer the delta tracking may have another disadvantage. They may not be able to provide the fluxes at surfaces. So you may want to calculate a flux, neutron flux, at a certain uh, surface. And uh, this is difficult when the delta tracking is employed because the passing of the neutrons through the boundaries is not monitored at all. So then uh, it's difficult to calculate the neutron flux and the surfaces for this reason. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.